The only thing that can make this Middle Eastern food even better is pita bread that tastes like it just came out of the oven. Today I'm gonna turn 360 of these recycled lithium batteries into a mobile power pack that can be used as a backup. If the power goes out at your house, if you wanna go camping, if you have a construction site without power to power your power tools, or if you simply want to take your toaster to your favorite restaurant. And if I catch you in here with that again, I will confiscate it. <laughs> well, I, I told my wife not to bring it. If you search for 2000 watt portable power stations, you can see that they're very pricey. And that is why I'm gonna build one myself. What we need is lithium batteries, battery cell holders, a power inverter, a cooler with wheels, and a professional balance charger. My friend Barry recycled a whole bunch of 18650 laptop batteries. He collected over 400 individual cells and sorted through them. Since he already charged them all and they have been sitting for a couple of months, all I had to do is measure the voltage. Anything below 2.5 volt is no good. There were also some that didn't pass the visual inspection, like this one for example that has acid leaking out. I'll show you in a little bit how a leaking battery can cause a short. These battery holders work perfect to get the right spacing between cells and look much better than gluing the batteries together. You can find a link for it in the description below. My original plan was to have 120 batteries in parallel times 3 and then half the 3 packs in series. But my buddy Kyle convinced me that building 3 individual 12 volt packs would be much better. When I told him that I will use a balance charger instead of battery management system, BMS for short, to protect against overcharging, he said, that's fine, but what about protecting against draining it too much? So I changed my setup to a 4S configuration using a 100 amp BMS. This way I have less amperature and should therefore be fine with 10 gauge wiring. I will make a separate video on BMS systems, how they work and why you need them. I was first planning on using a copper bus bar, but it didn't look good and soldering didn't work very well at all. So I ordered myself a handheld spot welder from Amazon. You charge it via USB and it lasted to weld about one side of the battery. I also ordered these nickel stripes that made it so much easier than the copper bus bars. But all of a sudden I noticed that one of the batteries got super hot. You can see how the plastic even started to bubble from the heat. So that left me no choice but to disconnect that battery so that it wouldn't catch on fire and then remove it all and put it back together. After I did this two more times, I figured I need a better way to test these batteries. But to test 360 batteries the conventional way by charging it and discharging it, that could take a year. So I disassembled the two packs that I didn't weld yet, put all of them on aluminum foil, and instead of using a charger like this to charge and discharge every single battery, I just measured them all once more, sorted out the ones that were below the threshold. Then I 
then connected them in series and then just left them there for a couple hours and waited. Now it was time to check if any of them got hot. Of course none of them got hot in this batch, go figure. Ready to cut the nickel stripes, they are easy to cut just with regular scissors and then start assembly. Some light cleaning with a scotch pad before spot welding. I had to adjust the spot welder to its maximum setting. In the next batch of testing you can see that I found one that had a short. In total I found 3 batteries that had a short and this testing procedure saved me a lot of time. Next we're gonna wrap the battery pack with some high temperature kept on tape. So instead of using a balance charger, I got myself a BMS from Amazon. Now we're gonna hook up the BMS, the battery management system. This is a 100 amp battery management system and we're gonna set it up right here. Soldering the 10 gauge silicon wire onto that small terminal wasn't exactly easy. Not the most beautiful soldering connections, but it will do. Some people say that you should not shorten your balance wires because it could change the resistance, but I find that ridiculous. You can hardly measure the resistance difference. Alright, three packs each with 120 batteries. Done! I do want to change the color of this cooler so that it looks a little cooler. <laughs> now I need to cut an opening for the socket panel. Measure twice, cut once. The oscillating saw seemed a good choice for this task. But seeing how dusty everything got, I had to move this operation outside. Next up, repairing the wiring for all the interfaces. This is the plug for the inverter. And I also got me a socket panel with two USB ports, a switch, a voltmeter, and two cigarette lighter sockets. To mount it all I got a second plate that goes into the inside to give it more stability. Making sure everything fits properly before applying some caulking. Once 
more high temperature kept on tip to tidy up a little bit, get the wiring a little more organized and protected. To protect the batteries, I got a self-adhesive battery-packed insulator gasket. A little bit of foam and ready for final assembly. Unfortunately, all the electrical connections, the ports and the sockets took up too much space so I could fit only two batteries instead of three. But that still leaves 240 batteries in over 2000 watt hours. Plugging in all the sockets and switches, installing the inverter and charging port, installing the wheels and handle, and then setting up and installing a fuse box. Finally, the last thing to do is setting up the inverter cable. The perfect tool for enjoying the outdoors away from all of modern life's accessories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.